Well, it's that time of year again. You know you need to send out a great year-end letter, but maybe you're not sure where to start. Don't worry, I've got you covered. In this video, I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step plan to help you craft an effective letter that will boost your fundraising success. Before we get into the details, a lot of you have told me that the hardest part about your year-end strategy is simply getting started. I hear you. The challenge often begins with writing the letter, but don't let that stop you. Today, I'm going to break it down into four simple steps. Trust me, by the end, you'll feel confident and ready to go. Step number one, who gets your letter? Knowing your audience is essential to any great fundraising letter, whether you're new to this or have been fundraising for years. Successful writers often tell you that the best letters are written to one particular person, someone who represents your donor base. This helps your letter feel personal and genuine. Now, the person you imagine should be someone you don't know too well. This helps ensure that you don't assume they understand your cause perfectly. But at the same time, it's someone you know well enough that you don't have to be overly formal. A great letter feels like it's coming from a friend and it's written from the heart. One of my colleagues used to picture his Uncle Charlie sitting at an old Underwood typewriter, typing a heartfelt letter to a friend. That's exactly the kind of warm, friendly tone you want to create. Whether your donors are familiar with your work or learning about it for the first time, your letter should feel personal, engaging, and written from a place of warmth. Step number two, what is your appeal? What is it that you're asking your donors to support? Here's the truth. People are motivated to give when they see an opportunity that's forward thinking and will make a real difference. A wise mentor once said to me, every organization has needs, but few have exciting opportunities. Your job is to uncover the exciting opportunity that you'll highlight in your letter. Think about this. What will motivate someone to not only read your letter, but to read until the very end where you outline the opportunity for partnership? You don't need a groundbreaking idea, although that would sure be nice but you do need to focus on something that's genuinely making a difference in the lives of the people that you serve. This is where a story of a changed life can make all the difference. I'll explain more about that in just a minute, but for now, focus on the program project or strategy that's meaningful to your community and compelling to your donors. Step number three, are you creating a hook and compelling story? If you've watched some of my previous videos, you might remember one called Revealing the Mysteries Behind a Fundraising Letter. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend watching it. Just click the link below when you finish this video. One of the main takeaways from that video is that every good letter needs a hook and a compelling story. Research shows that you have about three to five seconds to capture your reader's attention. If you don't grab them right away, your letter is likely to end up in the trash. Your hook can be a powerful opening sentence, a pull quote, or even your PS. That's right, the PS is often one of the first things readers look at. If your reader can't grasp the main point of your letter from those sections, they're not going to finish reading it. A great way to hook your reader is by telling a personal story 
of someone whose life has been changed by your work. And here's the secret. Use actual quotes from that person. This makes your story feel real and relatable. People love stories, especially when they can picture themselves or someone they care about in that situation. For example, imagine a pull quote that reads, I was down to my last dime and had nowhere to turn. Then I found XYZ Rescue Mission and it became my last hope. This kind of storytelling, especially when it includes three key elements, what life was like before, how it changed, and how it's different now, makes a huge impact. Step number four, what's the opportunity in closing? By this point in your letter, your reader should feel emotionally connected to your cause and be ready to hear about the opportunity to make a difference. Communicating this opportunity clearly and concisely is crucial. There's two steps to presenting the opportunity. First, you introduce the program, project, or strategy you're focusing on. You want to make sure the reader understands this opportunity within seconds. It should be easy to grasp and memorable. The second step is explaining the reader's role in achieving success. Be clear about what you're asking them to do. Do you want them to give a gift? If so, how much? Should they volunteer or complete a survey? Whatever it is, break it down step by step, and it should include action. Here's an important tip. Always give a specific amount or at least a range for gifts. For example, your gift of 500 will make a real difference in the life of someone like Gretchen. Or your gift of 250, 500, or even 1000 will help us continue this critical work. Make sure your call to action is simple, straightforward, and specific. The easier you make it for someone to give, the more likely they are to follow through. Now, before we wrap up, I want to remind you about one more key element, the PS. The PS in your letter is often one of the first things your reader will see. It might even be the only thing they read. A good PS isn't an afterthought as it is in most letters. It's a summary of everything you want your donor to understand. It should restate the life-changing story, the opportunity, and the call to action, all while driving home the deadline for your campaign. You want to make sure that if the PS is the only thing the donor reads, they still get the full message. Something like, P.S. Your gift today will help us reach our goal by December 31st and continue changing lives just like Gretchen's. Please send your gift of 500, 1000 or whatever you can give by using the envelope enclosed. Clear, concise, and action-oriented. That's what a great P.S. should be. Before I finish, I want to leave you with a few additional tips that can take your year-end appeal to the next level. These are strategies I've seen work for many organizations, including mine over the years, and they can help you stand out from the crowd. First, whenever possible, personalize your letters. I'm talking about more than just using the donor's name, though that's important too. Try to reference their past gifts or specific programs they've supported. This shows your donors that you value their unique relationship with your organization. For example, instead of just saying, Dear Friend, you might say, Dear Susan, 
Thank you for your continued support of our food pantry program. Because of you, we've been able to serve over 500 families this year. That kind of personalized touch can make a difference in how your donor feels about your letter. They'll see that they're not just one of many. You recognize them as an individual and you appreciate their specific contributions. Second, don't be afraid to include your data in your letter, but use it wisely. Numbers can be incredibly powerful when paired with stories. For instance, after you've shared a compelling personal story about how your organization helps someone in need, you can back it up with data like, this year we've helped over 1,200 families thanks to gifts and individuals like you. But remember, data should support your story, not overwhelm it. Too many numbers can make your letter feel cold or impersonal. Find the balance between storytelling and hard facts to reinforce your message without losing the emotional connection. Next, make it as easy as possible for your donors to give by offering multiple ways to contribute. While many people still like to mail in a check, others might prefer to give online through your website via mobile giving platform or even social media. The more options you provide, the easier it will be for your donors to support you in a way that's most convenient for them. You could add something like this to your letter. You can make your gift by mailing the enclosed check, visiting our website at www.xyznonprofit.org forward slash give or texting give to 12345. Giving options should be clear and seamless. Finally, don't forget the power of follow-up. Sending out a year-end letter is just the first step. You should follow up with your donors to reinforce your message. A well-timed email reminder or phone call can dramatically increase your response rate. Now, my next video will include how to make an effective year-end phone call. In your follow-up, don't just repeat the same message. Instead, provide a brief update on how close you are to your fundraising goal or any exciting progress you sent, since you sent the letter. You could say something like, thanks to the generosity of donors like you, we're halfway to our goal of raising $100,000 by December 31st. There's still time to make an impact. Follow-up doesn't have to be pushy. It's simply a way to remind your donors of the opportunity to make a difference before the year ends. So, let's recap everything we've covered today. We went over the four steps of writing a winning year-end letter. First, know your audience and write to one person as if they were a close friend. Second, determine the basis of your appeal by focusing on a meaningful, forward-thinking project or strategy. Third, create a hook and tell a compelling story that captures attention and pulls the reader in. And fourth, present the opportunity clearly and concisely and be sure to include a strong call to action. I know this seems like a lot of information, but once you start applying these strategies, you'll see just how effective your year-end appeals can be. Now that you've got all the tools you need to create a powerful year-end letter, it's time to put them into action. Start by outlining your letter, crafting your compelling story, and thinking about how you'll present your opportunity. And remember, the work doesn't stop once you send out that letter. Be prepared to follow up. Engage with your donors and make this year-end campaign your most successful yet. 
I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below if there were things that you especially liked or if there's topics you'd like to address. And let this community of life changers know that you're part of making a difference in our world. If you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified immediately of the release of the next video. If you wish to follow me on X, go to at Jim W. Dempsey on Instagram. If you have questions, go to fundraisingmasterminds.net forward slash Jim and Java. If you wish to join a community of like-minded leaders, join our Life Changers group on Facebook. As always, I wish you the best as you strive to become fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.